1949, tragedy struck the Torino Soccer Club when a Fiat airplane carrying 31 people crashed into a mountain peak outside of Turin, Italy. This devastating event claimed the lives of 22 members of the team, sending shockwaves throughout the country and the city. Torino, a club that carried the name of its beloved city, had been revered as one of the best teams of its era. The crash became known as one of the worst tragedies in Italian sports history, leaving a lasting impact on the world of soccer. In fact, the psychological effects were so profound that a book chronicling the incident was aptly titled The Day Italian Football Died. In 1958, tragedy struck Manchester United when a plane carrying the team crashed during takeoff from Munich's airport. This devastating event claimed the lives of 23 people, including eight players and eight journalists. To honor and remember those who lost their lives, a clock at Old Trafford Stadium in Manchester was frozen at 3.04 p.m., the exact time of the crash. Under the leadership of Matt Busby, the team had achieved great success, winning league titles in 1956 and 1957. What made their accomplishments even more remarkable was the fact that the average age of the players was just 24, earning them the affectionate nickname, the Busby Babes. Despite the tragedy, the spirit of Manchester United persevered, and they would go on to achieve even greater success in the years to come. In October 1960, tragedy struck the Cal Poly football team as they were returning home from a game against Bowling Green. Exhausted from their journey and faced with treacherous weather conditions, the team just wanted to get back to their loved ones. However, fate had a different plan in store for them. Despite almost zero visibility, the pilot made the ill-fated decision to take off. As the aircraft reached a mere 100 feet off the ground, disaster struck. First, the left engine failed, followed swiftly by the right engine. The plane plummeted back to earth, violently splitting in two and erupting into flames upon impact. The devastating crash claimed the lives of 22 out of the 48 people on board, tragically including 16 members of the Cal Poly football team. For the next nine years, Cal Poly's sports teams stayed close to home by not playing any games outside of California, avoiding the need for any games that required air travel. In 1961, tragedy struck the United States figure skating team as they were en route to the World Figure Skating Championships in Prague. On February 15th, the Sabina plane carrying the 18-member team crashed into a field in Belgium, resulting in the loss of all lives on board. Among the victims was Lawrence Owen, a talented 16-year-old who had recently won the women's title at the United States Figure Skating Championships. The devastating crash not only claimed the lives of these young athletes, but also robbed the American team of its brightest star. It would take years for the team to recover from this unimaginable loss and rebuild their talent pool. In 1970, tragedy struck the Marshall University football team when a Southern Airways DC-9 crashed into a mountainside, resulting in the loss of all 75 people on board. This devastating incident claimed the lives of 38 members of the Thundering Herd football team, making it the worst disaster involving an American sports team. The entire town was plunged into mourning as the loss of these young athletes was felt deeply by the community. The impact of the crash was so profound that it nearly led to the discontinuation of Marshall University's football program. It took weeks to hold all the funerals as friends, family, and fans came together to pay their respects and say their final goodbyes. We are Marshall was the subject of a 2006 movie about the crash. In 1972, the old Christians Rugby Union Club embarked on a fateful journey that would test their courage and resilience. Little did they know that their charter plane would crash in the treacherous Andes Mountains of Argentina setting in motion a gripping tale of survival. The sheer determination of these rugby players and their supporters is nothing short of awe-inspiring. Stranded at an altitude of over 11,000 feet, 
they faced frigid conditions and unimaginable challenges. Yet against all odds, 16 of them were ultimately rescued after 72 days of enduring unimaginable hardships. Their survival strategy was both shocking and desperate. They had to cannibalize the frozen bodies of their fellow passengers in order to stay alive. This incredible story of endurance and human spirit became the inspiration for the book Alive, the story of the Andes survivors, and later the 1993 film titled Alive. It was supposed to be a joyous celebration for the Cuban national fencing team. After their remarkable success at the Pan American Games in Caracas, Venezuela, where they swept the medals, they were eagerly looking forward to returning home and sharing their triumph with their loved ones. Little did they know that their journey back would end in tragedy. On that fateful day in October 1976, when the plane carrying the team and other passengers never reached its destination. Instead, all 73 individuals on board met a tragic and untimely end when a bomb on board exploded. The news of the event sent shockwaves through the sporting world and left the Cuban nation in mourning. The night of December 13, 1977 started like any other for the University of Evansville men's basketball team. They were excited for their next game and boarded the plane bound for Nashville, Tennessee. Little did they know that this would be their last journey together. Tragically, shortly after takeoff, the plane lost control and crashed, taking the lives of all on board. It was a devastating blow, not only to the university, but to the entire basketball community. Among the victims were all but one member of the Purple Aces basketball squad who did not make the trip. David Furr, in a twist of fate, straight out of a Final Destination movie, about two weeks after the crash that wiped out his entire team, Furr and his brother were killed by a drunk driver. In August 1979, the Paktakor FK soccer team was on top of the world. They had achieved what no other Uzbek soccer club had, they had made it to the prestigious Soviet top league. It was a moment of pride and joy for the team and their fans. But little did they know that their journey would end in tragedy. The team was traveling to play Dynamo Minsk when disaster struck. Mid-air, their plane collided with another plane over the Ukrainian town of Dniprozerzhinsk. The impact was devastating, and all 178 people on board both planes lost their lives. Among those who perished were 17 members of the Pactacor soccer team and their supporting staff. This tragedy sent shockwaves through the entire Soviet soccer league. In 1980, tragedy struck the world of amateur boxing as the U.S. boxing team faced an unimaginable disaster. On March 14th, news spread like wildfire, leaving everyone in shock. The team, filled with talented athletes, had been completely devastated by a fatal plane crash. Their journey from New York to Warsaw was meant to be a stepping stone towards the upcoming Olympic trials. Spirits were high as they anticipated the challenges ahead. However, fate had a different plan in store for them. As the plane neared its destination, unforeseen problems arose, leading to a catastrophic crash. The toll was devastating. 87 lives lost, including 14 American boxers and eight staff members. In November 1985, the Iowa women's cross country team experienced a devastating turn of events that transformed what should have been a joyous occasion into a heart wrenching tragedy. Having just finished second in the NCAA cross country championships, the team was on their way back home when disaster struck. After attending the awards ceremony, they boarded their plane in high spirits, unaware of the impending doom. However, poor weather conditions in Ames forced the pilot to redirect the flight to Des Moines. Little did they know that this redirection would prove fatal. The plane crashed down in a residential neighborhood, engulfed in a horrifying ball of flame, snuffing out the lives of all those on board.
In a tragic turn of events, the year 1987 witnessed the devastating loss of Alianza Lima, a renowned Peruvian soccer team. As their Navy plane made its way back to the capital after a victorious game in Pucallpa, fate took an unforgiving turn. The aircraft carrying 16 players and the team's beloved coach crashed into the depths of the Pacific Ocean on December 8th. The news sent shockwaves through the soccer community and left the nation mourning the loss of their talented athletes. Alianza Lima had recently secured first place with their latest triumph, making this catastrophe all the more heartbreaking for their fans. In 1989, a group of talented soccer players who were playing professionally in the Netherlands came together to form a special team called the Colorful Eleven. Their main objective was to make a positive impact on the lives of underprivileged children in Amsterdam's impoverished neighborhoods. Through sports, they aimed to provide these youngsters with role models who could inspire and guide them towards a better future. Little did they know that their journey would take a tragic turn. In June of 1989, the members of the Colorful Eleven boarded a commercial flight from Amsterdam to Suriname. They were excited about the opportunity to bring hope and joy to the children in Suriname through their exhibition matches. However, fate had something else in store for them. As the plane landed, disaster struck. The aircraft flipped, caught fire, and rolled upside down, resulting in a devastating crash. The impact of the crash claimed the lives of every single member of the Colorful Eleven team. The year was 1993, and the Zambian national soccer team was at the height of their power. Fresh off their remarkable victory over Italy in the 1988 Olympics, where they defied all odds and secured a stunning 4-0 win, this team of talented individuals was ready to conquer the world stage once again. Their next challenge awaited them in Dakar, where they were set to face off against Senegal in a crucial match to qualify for the World Cup. However, Tragedy struck before they could even step foot on the field. On that fateful day of April 27, the 18-player Zambian team, along with seven team officials, all boarded a plane bound for Dakar. Excitement and determination filled the air as they embarked on this journey that held so much promise for their future. Little did they know that this would be their last trip. The plane never arrived at its destination. Instead, it crashed into the vast Atlantic Ocean, claiming all lives on board. The news shook the world of soccer to its core. The Hendrick family has left an indelible mark on the NASCAR circuit. One of its prominent members, Ricky Hendrick, was not only a skilled stock car racing driver, but also a partial owner at Hendrick Motorsports, the renowned NASCAR team founded by his father, Rick Hendrick. Ricky had a passion for racing coursing through his veins, and it was evident in his dedication and talent. Unfortunately, tragedy struck on a cold, rainy day in October 2004. A small plane carrying Ricky and eight other members of the Hendrick Motorsports family, along with two pilots, set off on what was supposed to be a short flight from Concord, North Carolina to Martinsville, Virginia. Their destination was the Speedway where they planned to attend an exhilarating race. However, fate had other plans in store. The plane never made it to its intended destination. Instead, it tragically crashed, claiming the lives of all on board. On that fateful day in 2008, Richard Lloyd and his Apex Motorsports team were filled with excitement and anticipation as they embarked on their journey to France. Little did they know that their dreams of a successful racing season would be shattered in a matter of seconds. The plane carrying them suddenly lost power to its engines, rendering it helpless and causing it to crash into a house in Farnborough, London. The devastating plane crash claimed the lives of Richard Lloyd and his entire race crew, leaving the motorsports world in shock and mourning. On September 7, 2011, tragedy struck when a Russian airliner chartered by the esteemed Yaroslavl Lokomotiv hockey team crashed during takeoff near the city of Yaroslavl. The devastating plane crash claimed the lives of all but two of the 45 individuals on board, including 27 players, two coaches, 
and seven club officials. This heartbreaking incident sent shockwaves through the sports community, as Lokomotiv was a three-time Russian champion and a beloved team. Among the victims were notable figures such as Brad McCrimmon, a respected Canadian coach, Pavel Dimitra, the captain of the Slovak national team, and Jan Marek, Karel Rachunek, and Josef Vasicek, three talented members of the Czech national team. The All-Star Game is a time for athletes to bask in the glory of their accomplishments and be recognized for their skills. It's a celebration of their hard work and dedication to their profession. In December of 1956, four members of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and one from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were on their way back from the All-Star Game in Vancouver. Little did they know that tragedy would strike. Their Trans-Canada air flight encountered severe icing and turbulence over the mountains near Chilliwack, British Columbia, leading to a devastating crash. This horrific incident claimed the lives of all 62 passengers, including all five professional football players from the CFL who had been reveling in their achievements just hours before.